Hello guys, in this video here I will be trying to compare these two xenon bulbs. On the left side here we have the newest generation of the Extreme Vision and they claim it will give you up to 150% of uh, light. And on the right side here we have the D2S Ostrom Nightbreaker. This is the Philips biggest competitor and they claim it will give up to 70% of light, up to 20 meters longer beam distance uh, and I'm not sure what this, this means but when you are testing products from big companies like this, I'm not sure, but it's probably a good idea to uh, leave a disclaimer in here. All of these tests here are uh, conclusions from my testing, and my testing, of course, is not perfect, so the results will vary from uh, each test and uh, from uh, what these companies test themselves. So. Maybe you can take my tests here into consideration when buying uh, these kinds of bulbs, but don't base your knowledge from what I am saying or my test results. And I am 100% neutral in this uh, test as well. I don't uh, want any of these bulbs to uh, perform any better than the other. So it will be as interesting for me as for you guys to test the performance here. I'm not sure what is going to happen and I'm not going to go in the way to change the result of the test. So this here is the Philips Extreme Vision Generation 2 and they claim it will give up to 150% more light or more vision as they call it. When they say vision, that's probably is like some kind of disclaimer from themselves. If there was like uh, more light, then they probably had to actually prove that it is much brighter or 150% brighter. And this bulb here is of course genuine. You can check this with the sticker here on the bottom and uh, I think the Kelvin rating of these bulbs are around 4009 or 4800 Kelvin. Here we have the D2S from Ostram. They will claim it's up to 70% of brightness. Whatever that means, of course, they mean more light, but yeah and they claim up to 20 meters more of distance and the sign that I didn't really know what meant is that the light color will go up by 5% so we will have a whiter light and the lifetime here is supposed to be the same as any standard D2S bulb uh, I don't really remember the Kelvin I will maybe leave it in on the screen but this uh, Nightbreaker lamp here is warmer than the Philips one. And of course this one here is also genuine. Uh, this is of course not some eBay products. These bulbs are also brand new so the results will also maybe change in the course of time when all of the gas and salts and electrodes have maybe settled a little bit in the bulb. But from a standpoint when they are brand new is what I'm going to test here. I'm also going to test these bulbs here. This is like a copy of a Audi or maybe a Hella projector which is out of good quality. And I will use the hotspot and different places in the low beam. And I will also take the shield down to find the absolutely the highest or the strongest point to measure the light distance it will throw the light and also the intensity so the Osram Nightbreaker have now been warming up and should be warm uh, some time ago now and as you can see the light is not like pure white it got like a uh, not really but some kind of warm coloring to it it almost looks like brown yellow 
whitish. Yeah, it's hard to explain. And here you can see the wall. I have like set up tape um, bits on the wall so that I get the beam alignment somewhat similar on both bulbs. And inside the beam pattern, I have also placed uh, some more tape where I'm gonna measure it at the exact same point. And to measure, I'm using a Hagener uh, Lux meter, it's called EC1. And this is supposed to be supposed to be like not measured but they have actually tested like the silicone in the sensor and calibrated it to the right brightness. So it's old but it also costed a lot of money when it was new. So it should be good in my opinion. And now it's turned on high beam and, and I'm going to find the brightest spot now to measure the brightness and the beam distance. So the Philips bulb have now been warming up and the light tint is somewhat similar to the Austrian bulb but a little bit more white I would say. So based on my test results I made this graph and I'm gonna present the numbers to you later but as you can see the differences between the two bulbs were not that big but overall the Philips Extreme Vision was brighter uh, and as you can see on the graph the Philips Extreme Vision was somewhat of the same brightness and also under I think that maybe have something to do where I measured the point because I felt like the Philips Extreme Vision had its hotspot a little bit higher so if I were to measure a little bit higher I would probably gotten a little bit higher numbers but overall as you can see on the graph on the brightest point the Philips is brighter but it's only brighter by around 10% and 10% uh, uh, is somewhat uh, a difference from what we can see on the packaging they claim up to 150% on the Nightbreaker, no I mean the Philips Extreme Vision and on the Nightbreaker they say up to 70% but the differences between these two bulbs in my test in the hotspot was up to 10% brighter and the throwing distance when we are looking at the hotspot is 340 meters with one lux from the Philips Extreme Vision and with the Osram Nightbreaker that is 322 meters and the difference between those two numbers are only 5% so here you can see the numbers that I found. The top line there is the measurement that I got on the left side and then going further in to the lowest point and that was three, two, three points on the top there and then the highest number there is the hot spot and then going out on the other side again. And as you can see, the Philips Extreme Vision is overall a little bit brighter and even a little bit weaker in some points. But I talked about this in the previous picture. Maybe I feel it's I feel the difference was there. But as you can see, the Philips Extreme Vision is brighter, but it's not that much brighter. And you also have to take the Kelvin into consideration. I didn't do this in this test, I will maybe do it in the future, but it's hard to get on camera how they like perform in uh, real life. And often with the higher Kelvin you will have a little bit more problem seeing on like uh, wet roads or with roads and uh, air with a lot of particles in the air because it doesn't really penetrate it the same way as a lower Kelvin would. Uh, but I feel that I covered a lot of uh, measuring points and uh, 
parameters and things in this video so I think you also can take or get the conclusion yourself from this video and I hope you find this a little bit helpful and if I did anything wrong or if you have any f feedback leave a comment of course and I will maybe learn a little bit as well. Thanks!